Tuesday morning, the first thing on our agenda was to rescue Giuseppe Gentile. His Ford pickup dually conversion had converted one-piece wheels into two-piece wheels. And evidently, these wheels are hard to come by. And he got a hold of my brother. How far did you have to dig down in your trash can to find those? All the way at the bottom. Jeremy's a lot like Oscar the Grouch. He's very messy, but he never throws anything away. Everything is kept in his secret stash. And it's kind of a running joke when I get in his truck, I always go digging around to see what he's got hidden in there. A back scratcher? Or a jackass wiper. Jeremy's known for being a quick-witted, self-employed mobile mechanic. And around here, he's generally the first person someone calls when they're in big trouble. And I am happy. From dump trucks to skid steers, Jeremy fixes and works on just about anything. He's a happy man. Happy That's what happens when you call the old man's garage. He summons the god. So this morning, the god of mobile mechanics has been summoned to National Trail Raceway with his secret stash of 2003 Ford dually wheels. Same What's going job. on, man? Oh, same old. What about you? <laughs> Another day. Yeah. <laughs> All the way from California, and you break your wheels. Oh, yeah. You guys see the other <laughs> wheels. They're broken back there. These guys have hauled this trailer from California all the way out to Ohio. And now, these cast steel dually conversion wheels have left him stranded in central Ohio. They found this problem yesterday when they took the truck to a local tire shop to have tires put on and found the inside duels broken. So that started the hunt for some stock Ford wheels, which evidently has led somehow to Uncle Bucko. The trip from California to Ohio is a rough one, and this wheel problem is pretty minor compared to the trailer coming off the motorhome and hitting a guardrail. That happened last week. You're welcome. Good luck going down to Kentucky. Yeah. God bless you, man. Now you guys got a long ride home. The way I see it, these guys are absolutely nuts pulling from California to Ohio in a converted Ford pickup truck from a single wheel to a dually, especially with this heavy trailer. But to each his own. We got them all taken care of and got them back on the road so they can head to Bowling Green, Kentucky for the next No Prep Kings race. Once we got Giuseppe back on the road, Jeremy headed up to the farm to help my dad, and I came back to my shop to help Billy work on his Nova. He was busy plumbing some oil return lines into the valve covers, and he needed to go to Jeg's to pick up some fittings. And I decided I'd go with him, since I've got a few things I need at Jeg's for the Malibu. Uncle Terry dropped off a brand new Quick Fuel 750E85 carburetor a few days ago, but I wanted to pick up a new E85 tester and a fuel line kit for the carburetor, because when I get home, I plan on making the switch from gas to E85 on the Malibu. By the time we got back, Jeremy had come back down from the farm and he was busy working on Billy's Nova, clearancing the frame for the tie rods off the rack and pinion. So while the guys are busy out in the shop working on Billy's Nova, I hopped in the Suburban and went down to the Speedway to get a couple cans filled with E85. But before I can put the ethanol in the tank, I first need to try and run out some of the pump gas that's already in the gas tank now. Generally, I would just use an electric fuel pump to pump the tank dry, but the Malibu still uses a mechanical fuel pump mounted to the block. So, since the weather was nice, I decided what better way to get rid of some gasoline than to burn it up making a little cruise around Buckeye Lake. I went down, took some pictures and a few video clips, and then headed back to the shop. When I pulled the gas carburetor off the Malibu, I realized that I was gonna need to swap base plates because the E85 carburetor doesn't have provisions for the vacuum lines for the vacuum-operated heater controls or the TCC lockup switch on the 700R4. So after a simple base plate change, I went ahead and put five gallons of ethanol in the Malibu and fired it up with a new E85 carburetor and then took it straight down to the filling station to top off the tank with fresh E85. I took the car out and drove it around a little bit last night and it ran really good. So far, I'm really impressed with this new carburetor. All right guys, so it's Wednesday morning. As you saw in the video, I got the carburetor swapped out last night. Uh, everything went really smooth. It was a little bit rich at first uh, because it still had some pump gas in the fuel line, but uh, after about five minutes, it calmed down. Uh, I adjusted the idle mixture screws, adjusted the idle speed, and everything's good. 
So I drove it around a little bit last night. It runs really good. There's no stumbles. Uh, it feels like it's definitely got a lot more low end power. Um, but today what I want to do is I want to take this car out and do a fuel economy test. I just want to see, because this is a big deal. A lot of people are concerned, uh, about fuel economy. Uh, and it is a concern. It really is because E85 is definitely, uh, a little harder on fuel than pump gas. But uh, it's summertime here in Ohio now, or it's close, and it's getting warmer. And I want to bracket race and index race this car this summer. And uh, by my past experience with E85, uh, it's very consistent. And generally, the engine tends to run quite a bit cooler. Uh, the intake manifold stays cool because it's uh, a lot like alcohol. It chills the intake manifold. So for a bracket or an index uh, application, it's really good fuel for that. But for right now, I wanna concentrate on testing this car. We're gonna take it down the interstate, run 25 miles down, 25 miles back, and we'll check and see what the fuel economy is. For those of you who may not be familiar with this car, it's a 1979 Malibu with 28,000 original miles, powered by a 355 cubic inch small block Chevy, flat top pistons with AFR 195 heads, March underdriven pulley set, inch and 5 8 headers with 3 inch dual exhaust. The car has a complete MSD ignition system and it has a Team G single plane intake manifold with a brand new quick fuel 750 E85 carburetor. The car uses a 700R4 transmission with lockup converter. The converter is a 3800 stall, but with the lockup option, it should still do pretty decent on fuel, despite the fact that it uses a 411 ring and pinion in the original stock 7.5 inch Malibu rear axle. I stopped at the speedway, topped the tank off with E85, and then me and June Pup hit the road. We record the mileage and then head down State Route 79 to hop on Interstate 70. I quickly verified that the speedometer matches the GPS on my phone to make sure that it's reading correctly before I head on the interstate with the air conditioning blowing ice cold to keep me and June Pub nice and comfy. I wind the Malibu up to about 70 to 75 miles an hour and the water temperature stays right at the thermostat rating, 160 degrees, with the converter locked, 2500 RPM on the tack, and about 70 miles an hour on the speedometer. The test route that I've chosen is about 25 miles from State Route 79 in Hebron down to State Route 40 in Zanesville. I was half tempted to stop at A&W and get a hamburger for me and June Pup, but I really need to get this video done. So I hop right back on 70, lock the converter on the 700R4, and head straight back to the Speedway station on 79 in Hebron. So far I'm pretty happy with this carburetor, although it does seem just a slight bit rich off idle. Just on the transition it blubbers just a tiny little bit, so that might be something I can cure with an air bleed adjustment. But for today, I just want to see what this carburetor does basically right out of the box. I anxiously waited for the pump to kick off, and it finally did at 4.3 gallons. So based on the mileage from start to finish, I do the math. 435.3 minus 382.2 is 53.1 miles, divided by 4.3 gallons, and that comes out to about 12.3 miles to the gallon which gives the Malibu a range of about 200 miles on a tank of fuel, which really isn't too bad for a 3,600 pound streetcar without fuel injection, with air conditioning, that can run 1230s to 120s on motor. Now for the record, this isn't the first car I've ever converted from gas to E85, and there's been a lot of questions about maintenance. So I figured today is the perfect opportunity to invite Denny and his 68 Camaro over to the house. Because Denny called me the other day and said he's having a little bit of trouble with the Camaro not wanting to run right. Now I know the Camaro doesn't get driven very often and it's been on E85 for two years. So I wasn't too surprised when I pulled the front carburetor bowl off to find a massive amount of E85 jelly and corrosion, which is why I switched my carburetor to chrome fuel bowls. The chrome fuel bowls don't oxidize and corrode like the standard aluminum bowls do. The oxidation and jelly was in everything, so I took the carburetor completely apart to clean it out real good. 
And while I've got it apart, I decided I'd go ahead and swap the fuel bowls out from his bowls to the original brand new bowls off my E85 carburetor that have never seen fuel. We were all hanging out listening to the stereo and having a good time, and evidently Miss Vicky got to feel in some kind of way when REO Speedwagon came on. I had just about finished up the carburetor about the time Vicky finished up her duet with Kevin Cronin. I took it outside and bolted on the Camaro and fired it up, and it was time to take it for a test drive. It only took about an hour and a half, some standard hand tools, a fresh set of gaskets, and one brand new set of carburetor bowls to put Denny's Camaro back on the road. The first thing we did was drive straight down the speedway and top the old Camaro off with a fresh tank of E85. Denny absolutely loves driving his big block four-speed Camaro around, especially when it's not overheating. So is it staying cool and everything? Yeah, it's running about 190, 195 tops. Yeah, so you know, it's made all the difference in the world having the uh, E85 run through it. As a matter of fact, uh, on a first generation Camaro feed on Facebook, there was a guy that was saying that he's got a big block and it's just overheating, he's tried everything. And I commented and I said, let me tell you what, a friend of mine named Bill Hoskinson <laughs> <laughs> told me, Denny, I'm telling you what, this car overheating, I can, I can solve that in no time. I said, really? I said, yeah, do you mind going to an 885 car? Whatever it's gonna take, and I mean to tell you, you hit spot on. And I told the guy, it's that's spot on advice. Go to E85, you won't overheat anymore. So it's this thing, matter. it's a four speed, right? It's a 454, four, four speed. speed. It's got a little camshaft in it, a little intake manifold. Yeah. I've locked out the ignition timing for you before right. and set the ignition timing. But you know what gears are in this thing, any idea? I think it's a 373. 373, so it's a 373 four speed, mild cam, 454 stock heads. Mm -hmm. But on gas, it was a miserable thing to deal it with. It was absolutely miserable. It's, as warm as it is right now, I'd be running 210, 215, just cruising. And then I'd come to a stop, it was 220, 225, instantly. And I was like, oh, I gotta get, I, we gotta get this light to change because I gotta move. So no, the, the 85 is just, it, it's made all the difference in the world. I've got an old electric fan that my son got for me. And uh, it, it really didn't help much. I'd throw it on when I'd come to a stop. Mm -hmm. I don't need it. I, I truly don't need the fan. The E85 makes all the difference in the world. You're welcome, Dennis the Menace. You better get home before it rains. All right, brother. Love you, Danny. Be careful, okay? Welcome back everybody. So we got Denny all taken care of. We got the Malibu swapped over. Had a really good day today. We had good weather until this evening. It poured down rain right after Denny left. Uh, still pretty wet out there right now. I'm not sure, I haven't checked the weather for tomorrow. I'm not sure what we're gonna get into tomorrow, but I did get a text message from Uncle Bob today. The cylinder heads are done for the 55 Chevys, 327. So if it's gonna start raining and get nasty, <laughs> Looks like I may be working on this 327 out here in the garage so we can get the old 55 Chevy back on the road. In other news, I did manage to get Reggie Threlkeld's carburetor shipped out today. Actually, Vicky did. I helped her box it up and uh, I went ahead and uh, autographed the base plate on the bottom of the carburetor, put my initials on it in case it makes any difference to him later on down the road. But Vicky helped me get it boxed up and got it shipped out. So Reggie, your carburetor's on the way. I'm sorry for the delay, I got busy. Uh, with no prep kings weekend and everything was just really hectic. We had company here from out of town and I just kind of forgot all about it, but we got that thing shipped out today. Plans for this weekend. I think, I think, don't hold me to it, but I think Billy's going to take the weekend off from racing to finish up the Nova. That's the plan that I've heard today anyway. Uh, he may try and take it testing someplace this weekend. Uh, I do know that I am going to try and race this weekend in the Malibu because I want to see how much better it runs on E85. I can tell you that just driving it around, it has much more low-end torque. Uh, it gets through the gears a little faster. At least 
I feel like it does. I haven't had a whole lot of time to uh, drive it aggressively. <laughs> Today I was more concerned about fuel economy range because uh, some of these drag and drive events are really cool. Uh, I'm really interested in doing some of this stuff with the Malibu. Uh, not trying to compete with, you know, fast cars with it, but just to be able to go and do it and create some content and enjoy it. Um, we've got the air conditioning blowing ice cold in the Malibu. Uh, it doesn't have to be on E85 to be able to cruise. In fact, it does just fine on pump gas. However, I like having it on E85 for bracket and index racing because the engine does run a lot cooler. Uh, it's easier to cool the car off after you make a pass or you don't even really have to cool the car off after you make a pass. Uh, the car has a 160 thermostat in it and on E85, it stays at 155 to 160 degrees in the intake manifold. Um, it just, it really runs nice on it. It sounds a little bit better. Uh, the cam sounds a little bit rowdier. I did mention that earlier today, I noticed that it does have just a little bit of a rich condition just on tip in, just barely off idle. And I think that condition can be rectified with uh, a minor air bleed change. Uh, the jetting seems to be fine. You know, I haven't done any tuning on it. The only thing I did do was it comes out of the box with a 4.5 power valve. And I went ahead and switched that to an 8.5. And I do that in pretty much every single carburetor that I work on uh, because I like for the power valve to open a little bit earlier so I don't have to rely on the accelerator pump shot nearly as much to cover up that lean spot uh, from tip in on the throttle. But anyway, I plan on taking that Malibu someplace this weekend and do a little bit of racing with it. Uh, I believe National Trail Raceway, my home track right down the road here, has a Friday night test and tune this week. So you never know. You never know what may happen there. Uh, I know that I had a two tenths delay in the nitrous controller and a one second ramp to run 1140s. Uh, the last time I had the car out. Uh, I feel like the 60 foot may improve by a tenth, just putting it on E85. Do the math, that's 1130s. And the car's already been 1130s once before on the brakes. Um, the thing of it is, I'd really like to get a 10 second pass on that car, <laughs> but I have to be careful that rear end. Um, I know the car went 149, 60 foot one weekend down at Edgewater when I grabbed the button right off the hit. Uh, it carried the front wheels a few feet. It was smooth. It wasn't what I would consider violent, but it was definitely enough to break that ring and pinion. I think I broke an axle shaft the last time I tried to grab that thing right out of the hole. So I can't, I can't grab that thing by its throat right off the hit. I got to be gentle with it. I got to let it leave a little easy. Um, and then once I get it out and get it rolling, I can go ahead and turn the sauce on it. But I'd like to try and get a 10 second pass out of that Malibu. And that may happen Friday, test and tune session down here at Trails. If I don't break it and everything goes well, I may try and stay down there this weekend and do a little bracket racing with it. We'll see how it goes. Anyway, questions, comments, concerns about E85, put them in the comments. I'll go down through them and we'll talk about it a little bit in the comments section. Appreciate everybody for watching, liking, sharing, subscribing, and supporting our family. Thank you all very much. Good night.